So this is Digital Origins, written by Zach Diamond Wasser or Vassa. We have had a discussion about this, Zach, and I'm sorry if we've chosen to say it in the wrong way. Actually, we said it in both ways. So. Exterior Twin Peaks, San Francisco, early morning. An old sedan pulls up and parks next to a beat up Jeep Cherokee in an empty parking lot that overlooks San Francisco. Pink fog blankets the city below. Interior sedan, early morning. Linda L. Thompson, 40s, bleach blonde with dark graying roots, puts the car in park. Her son, Joey, late teens, thin, tall, sits shotgun and stares at the floor mat, resigned. Interior Jeep Cherokee, early morning. Reggie Puckett, thirties, pale, wiry, sits in the driver's seat. He has the sun visor pulled down and he's looking in the mirror. He's rubbing something on his face, but we can't see what. Reggie doesn't acknowledge that Li Linda and Joey have pulled up and parked. Aubrey Puckett sits in the back seat behind his son, Reggie. He's in his fifties, sinewy like his son, but tan, a day laborer. Aubrey looks out of the window at Linda, flashes a tight smile. Linda only stares back, serious, ready. She gives Joey a nod. Exterior Twin Peaks, San Francisco, early morning. Joey gets in the front seat of the Jeep next to Reggie, who we see has painted his face white and is now using a makeup sponge to paint black ovals around his eyes. Joey picks up a makeup sponge caked white and starts painting his face. Exterior Twin Peaks, San Francisco, moments later, a few cars are now parked nearby. Couple of early morning fitness nuts hitting the trails and tourists taking in the view. The sun has burned the fog off, revealing the pale city underneath. The two cars pull out and snake down Twin Peaks Boulevard towards San Francisco. At the bottom of the drive, the Jeep stops and turns right. Then the sedan stops at the intersection and turns left. Exterior Bohemian Club, downtown San Francisco morning. Reggie, Aubrey and Joey walk down the sidewalk dressed in all black, their faces painted white and black to look like skulls. They are each carrying something, a plastic rack for cups covered with white tablecloth, a warming tray, a long cardboard box for a 12 foot sub. They walk up to the Bohemian Club, large nondescript red brick building covered with manicured ivy. A security guard stands out front dressed in a black suit, wearing a simple masquerade mask. Reggie takes the lead, confident. Hi there, we're the caterers. As they walk inside, we see a plaque set into the exterior wall of the building. It depicts an owl perched on a branch in front of a full moon and reads, weaving spiders come not here. Interior Bohemian Club staircase day, Reggie, Aubrey and Joey follow a head valet, an employee at the Bohemian Club, up a grand staircase. The head valet is wearing his typical uniform, but he has fake fangs and his face is painted white. Sorry, and his face is painted white, red around the mouth. He garbles his words because of the fake teeth. I was told the order we placed was substantially larger. What are you saying? I can't follow that thing? The head valet pops the teeth out. I was saying that our order included more food than what I'm seeing here. Substantially more. We're expecting dozens of members plus their guests and we can't... Oh, don't worry, there's plenty of food. There's also a lot more here than you'd think. As the group walk up the stairs, they pass the second floor library. The head valet keeps chattering on about the elite guests and other preparations, but Reggie isn't paying attention. The head valet's voice fades as Reggie stares into the library. The room is all dark wood and books with a wraparound balcony overlooking the main floor. A group of old white men stand near hard leather chairs, all of them wearing variations of the same costume, dark robes and pointy hats each with a drink and cigar in hand, laughing and talking, already drunk and it's barely 10 a.m. Reggie watches them and smiles to himself, lost in thought. Sir? Could you get him? Oh. Uh... Audrey, Aubrey nudges Reggie to get his attention. Hmm? Sorry, I was just, uh, you were saying? I was just directing you to the kitchen, which is right this way. The group walks into the kitchen, interior Bohemian Club kitchen day. The kitchen door opens and they all walk in. It's a typical professional kitchen, tile floor, metal tables, pots and pans hanging from hooks, a head chef and two sous chefs standing in the kitchen. And here we are. We've also provided our kitchen staff to you complimentary. They won't be necessary. Go ahead, 
take the day off, muchachos. We can handle it from here. Confused, the three chefs look up to the head valet. But, uh, are you sure? Positive, please. Amigos, hombres. Just kidding, really. You've got it. As the chefs file out, the head valley lingers for a moment. Okay, well, let me know, or anyone know really, if you need anything, and we can... We will. Thank you again for your help. Reggie smiles, the head valley gets the hint and leaves. After a beat, the three men start unpacking. Reggie flicks open a butterfly knife. He hands it to Aubrey, who loses it to cut open the sandwich box, revealing three AR-15 style rifles handed, hidden inside. Joey lifts the top of the warming tray and we see it's full of pipe bombs and other explosives. Reggie pulls out the white tablecloth off the plastic rack and takes out extended magazine clips hidden inside for both the AR-15s and the pistols host, holstered on their hips and ankles. The men assemble their arsenal. Why wouldn't he leave? What? That guy kept hanging around like he's suspicious or... No, oh, he's nothing. You're just acting suspicious. Kitchen door swings open, Reggie and Aubrey and Joey freeze. The head valley walks in backwards, carrying Halloween themed plates on a plastic crate. My apologies, gentlemen. I forgot to tell you we're having special, we have special Halloween. Head valley turns around, terror. The three men stare back, weapons out. The head valley drops the plates, which crash on the floor at his feet. Joey and Aubrey are wide eyed, panicked. Reggie, cool, racks his pistol. Bang. Smash cut, title card comes up, digital originals. Interior, Marcella's front hall, day. We hear a cell phone buzzing. Marcella Campo, first generation Colombian American, nearly 40, but you wouldn't know it, opens the front door to her house in Berkeley, California. She's wearing an overstuffed backpack and dra dragging a cart loaded with camera and production cases, struggling to find her phone. She rolls a cart down the front hall into her living room, increasingly agitated, looking for her phone. The living room is sparse, old couch, old TV, a few photos in old frames. She parks the car, drops her backpack, searches through it and finds her phone. <coughs> the caller info scrolls across the tree. News gathering desk, NY. Marcella is annoyed, but tries to hide it. This is Marcella. Hey, Marcella, are you free? I think there's something happening downtown. Exterior balcony day. We can see the smoke rising into the air on a nice day in Oakland. Pan down, Alex Duffy, our main character in her 20s, Sits in a plastic lawn chair on a balcony, smoking a spliff, stoned as fuck. She's wearing headphones and listening to the podcast, Media Michigas. Right, exactly. Alex Duffy hits the 10 second back button in the podcast app. She's far too high to understand what she's listening to, but she's determined to try. The truth is, Twitter, TikTok, those are the assignment editors of the modern newsroom. Editorial judgment, discretion, they're relics of a bygone era. Right, exactly. The audio cuts out as Duffy's phone buzzes, startling her. She looks at her phone, panic. The caller's contact info scrolls across the screen. Marcella Campo, TNC producer, AKA boss lady. Duffy stands up, fumbles to put out the spliff, walks into the sliding glass door and accepts the call as she steps inside. Interior, Alex Duffy's apartment day. The living room is empty except for a plastic lawn chair next to a couple of cardboard boxes stacked on top of each other, a makeshift table. Zigzag papers, weed and tobacco crumbs on the box where she left them. Duffy answers, anxious, trying to hide it. Hey, Marcella. Interior, Marcella's living room day. Marcella builds a camera on her coffee table and talks to Duffy on a speaker. The shot cuts back and forth between two characters. Hey, Alex, what are you up to? Are you in the office today? Oh, uh, no, I have the day off. The day off? Didn't you just start? Well, technically, I haven't started yet. You haven't? I thought you were in the bay already, that you moved here this week. No, I did. I'm here. Oh, so you are? Yeah. But you're just not working? No, not yet. Why not? Uh, I needed time, you know, to set my place up. Marcella is packing her bag and can't find something. Fuck me. I'm sorry, I didn't realise you needed me. What? No, it's not that. I just, well, I do need you, actually. Are you free? I mean... Uh... I figure it out. It would be a good story for you to cover to kick off your television news channel career. 
I, I'm not new. What's that? I'm not new to TNC. I mean, you're not. No, no, I'm new to the SF Bureau, obviously, but I worked as an AP in New York for the last couple of years. Oh, I didn't know that. Did I know that? I don't know. Uh, we we talked about it a little bit when during the interview. Okay, right. I'm kind of remembering that now. So it's not like I need field field experience. Well, you always need more experience. There's always a chance to learn. Right. Sure. But if you're busy with the move, okay, just shoot me a text if any control rooms calls you, because I gave them your number since I thought you were coming. Oh, a uh, TV wants this. Yeah, a live hit for the noon hour. We're also supposed to turn a digital package too, but if you're not coming, then I'll probably ask to... Well, actually, I mean, I didn't know it was for TV. Uh, not that that matters, but... Right. Uh, but yeah, okay, I'll come. Like you said, always a chance to learn. Interior Uber afternoon. Duffy sits in the back seat, AirPods in, her FS7 camera on her lap, searching Twitter and Google for info on what's going on at the Bohemian Club. The Uber driver weaves through the traffic on the Bay Bridge, heading into San Francisco. He looks at Duffy in the rearview mirror. Oh, is that a camera? Duffy takes a headphone out. Sorry, what did you say? I asked if that's a camera. Yeah, 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 it is. That's what I thought. Duffy puts her headphones back in, back into her phone. Looks expensive. What do you say? I said it looks expensive. Ah, okay, yeah, right. Is it? I think so, yeah. I mean, relatively, I'm not sure exactly, to be honest. It's not mine, so... It's not? And, and we're going to stop there. Um, apologies, um, Zach, but I know you wanted us to read 15 pages, but we have a strict policy of reading 10 and it would be wrong to change it just for you. Everybody else would say, read 15 for me too. So um, thoughts, gentlemen and ladies. Um, Stuart. Okay, well, I really like the beginning of this. Um, I, th I thought it was a classic of its genre, if you like, um, sort of gangster, the setup of the potential shooting. Um, I wanted to know whether this gang <laughs> were going to shoot the men in the old men in the boy in the library. <laughs> um uh and see what happened there um but yeah that was that all had the right setup there was a lot of description in the script i thought um and possibly you could cut down cut down a bit on that but he, obviously clearly setting the scene um uh the characters the way they were described were quite intriguing and i wanted to know more and uh, as an actor i was intrigued on you know building up the backstory of these characters. It was really interesting. Um, I could see a lot of potential there. Um, uh, yeah, where where is this set? In San Francisco, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Twin yeah. Peaks. Is that the Twin Peaks, where Twin Peaks, the series, is filmed or was based on? No, it's not. That's somewhere else. No, the, the, that it's Twin Peaks is near Lake Arrowhead, I think, isn't it? Somewhere like that? There's probably more than one Twin Peaks. Isn't there, there is there? more than one Twin Peaks. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so that was in my head, at the back of my head, that this sort of strange things going on. Um, uh, well, yeah, so, and then um, the character of Marcella and um, or Alex. Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of wanted to see where that was going to go as well, but but. Uh, yeah, it's very hard from the mount that we had, and that's probably why you wanted an extra five pages read. Yeah, was because um, which I read bef before this session, but mm -hmm. um, it was kind of wants to know where that was going to go, that relationship and the boss and the, the kind of um, reporter. Um, so yeah, intriguing. I wanted to know more, and okay. um, you did it. You did what it was. You did well. I thought. Yeah. Brilliant, thanks. Emma? Yeah, I was, um, you know, I was intrigued enough to want to hear more after the first 10, and I did read, obviously, the rest of them on my own, but um, one of my very favourite things was um, uh, 
As they walk inside, we see a plaque set into the exterior wall of the building. It depicts an owl perched on a branch in front of a full moon and reads, yeah. Weaving Spiders Come Not Here. I thought, what is that? That's kind of rather wonderful. And um, then it's a bit like the Masons or something, isn't it? All mm. these people, or like, I don't know, like the Ku Klux Klan or something. The these old hats. white men. Nobody else is given a sort of racial descriptor, but they're old white men with pointy hats on, you know, like sort of wizards or something. It's very funny and so yeah um, I thought it was quite good fun because it's set up like it's going to be a kind of you know heist or something there's going to be a crime committed and then they go in there and it's quite funny when it's like we're the caterers and it's like oh but yes it could be because you know everybody's all halloween and it's a special thing and they're fitting in and then it's like ha oh, ha no it's a double bluff and um yeah they're not the caterers um really at all of course and um yeah so i mean that, that was quite fun that little little bit there um yeah, and I think I think that's all my notes at the moment. I didn't have an awful lot of them, but yeah, um, interesting. What will happen next? Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, really like it actually. Uh, the character is very well written. The first, I'm I'm curious as to what Linda L has to do with it, because you get a description of her, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So whether she turns up later or not, I don't know. I didn't read the rest of it. Well done, <clears> you. I was cold reading, because I got all the windows open, so it was cold. Uh, no, I really enjoyed it. Uh, one, my criticism possibly is Marcella's character, not that well described, as it were, as the other three main characters, if they're principal characters, or if they're just the ones who are starting it off. But no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But definitely want to know more. And I, I kind of really like the Reggie character, you know, his father and Joey, a little bit panicky and everything, and Reggie's just kind of bang. You know, that's that problem solved. So I kind of like him. I'm kind of drawn to him. <laughs> Thank you. Aaron. Well, then I thought it was interesting, though, that it was described that Alex Duffy is the main character because, like, I wasn't really expecting that because you have all these characters established. Um, um, I, I thought it was really interesting because, like, it's it's kind of like a, a crime story, probably, but it's also a little fun, which was, you know, like Emma was saying, I think that it's interesting. I want to know what's going to happen and how this is all connected. I'm not sure if it's a series or a, a film. And also there's a technical, um, the co phone conversation, uh, you could just, it's an intercut, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens next. I, I feel like I'd like to see, like you said, who Elle is, if she's like, the ringleader and all of whatever's happening. Um, yeah, definitely. It's really well written. The characters are really interesting. It has a, a vibe that reminds me of like Jordan Peele, you know, who wrote like, who wrote like Get Out and stuff yeah. like that. Like all of a sudden, it, you know, you have that one character that pops in that's all of a sudden like really hilariously funny. Like I feel like Alex Duffy seems like they could be like really, they have this like high pressure job and they're kind of like, hey, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. It's really interesting. Cool, thank you. Um, I forgot to mention. I love the yeah. fact that I love the fact that Joey, who's now gone off to be involved in what could be a heist or a murder or whatever, is dropped off by his mum. I love that. <laughs> of course, what we don't know is whether one of the pockets is his father. Yeah. Mm. Well, it, 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 it could won't... be that it could be like, okay, you're going to see your dad and your granddad. For a nice day out, family. and he's caught into a heist. Right, so I just thought that that bit of being dropped Good off twist. your mum. Yeah. <laughs> if we're going to go and kill somebody, make sure your mum gets you here at the right time. At the right time, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> um, I I really like the way it opens, and I really like those three characters. And I was slightly disappointed then when we went to Marcella and Alex Duffy. I can't remember which one of you said. Um, I thought Marcella was very well described, as were the three guys at the beginning. 
And we get to Alex Duffy, she's supposed to be our main character, and that's the only description that you give her. She's our main character in her 20s. And I'm thinking that's, you know, everybody else, come on, Marcella's a first generation Colombian American, nearly 40, but you wouldn't know it. And you've instantly got a picture there. Alex Duffy, she's just a stoner by the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, come on, guys. Um, well, she and, definitely didn't feel like a, um, the main character to she me. She didn't because she comes in on page six. That's six minutes in after the main titles. You know, I would have maybe have had her right at the start and maybe into Cutter with these guys getting ready. Maybe she's sitting there and you, that gives you the thing of the kind of, OK, what's going to go on here? You know, we've got this woman who's smoking a joint in a garden and and then these guys are sitting in the, you know, car park and getting made up. Are they going to what are they doing? Are they mime artists? Are they going to <laughs> Halloween? But what? And then, and then you just keep going backwards and forwards a couple of times just to go, OK, this person, we're going to meet them again, you know. And then when you go to her the next time and she gets the call, you're you're right there thinking, OK, this does mean something. This is, you know, um, other than that little point, I thought, yeah, I, I, I liked it. It was great. Um, I did read on the other 15 pages. You will be happy to know. Um, um, and I, I, I wasn't sure we needed the whole conversation with the Uber driver, but. Hey, who knows? Um, I, 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 I really would have liked those three guys just to have carried the whole story, to tell you the honest <laughs> truth. I just want them to be the main characters. Yep. <laughs> Rip. I think there's a lot to be made out of that. <laughs> I read in between the lines, and it's interesting at the end of page, or on page 15 that Marcella gets bumped off. Mm. Um, I haven't so, got there. So, uh, sorry, John. Oh, spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler. <laughs> but I read in between the lines, I think Alex is then gonna have to go and solve or gets involved in crime the the what how to solve the, the or report on this crime story. Um possibly. Yeah, she's involved with Joey or something. Yeah. So I mean it's 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 that. always a difficult one when you have such a great setup for a crime mm. and then you have to pull away from yeah. it mm. and go through the because because I don't know. It's always a bit of a letdown insofar as it's a bit Columbo-like, isn't it? You know? You've almost got to have an equally compelling story. Oh my God, yeah. Up, you you know, have. Follow up. And you've got to have a really compelling character, I think. Yeah. Like and the Columbo, like Columbo was an amazing character. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you've got to have half decent actors as well. You know. Um, so. I don't think anybody else. Would be good choice of location. Love San Francisco. Never been. I'm not Highly recommend. Cause... I could see that, but mainly because I've been there. <laughs> so... I, I'm not going there now because they killed Marcella. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody told me. Nobody gave me a spoiler alert. Sorry. Just spat it out, Stuart. <laughs> 